What is going on you guys, h one Mayo here, and in today's video on the DG YouTube channel, we are going to be breaking down and giving you guys a guide on the operator fuse. There's going to be a lot of very important topics with this reworked operator, so make sure you guys watch up until the end of the video. But with all of that being said, let's jump into the guide. So starting out with Fuse's loadout, let's talk about his primary weapons. As most of you know, Fuse has access to a shield, the Russian LMG, and the AK-12. As for secondary guns, you have the PMM or the paintball pistol. Lastly, secondary utility is breaching charges or a hard breaching device. Now something to note recently that happened, the AK-12 did receive a nerf, the recoil is much higher, and the vertical recoil is a lot more intense. So personally, I'm going to be using the flash hider for this nerf, since it does help with vertical recoil the most. Now I also want to talk about Fuse's rework in general with this cluster charge. So for the people who don't know, in the upcoming season Crystal Guard, Fuse will be seeing a buff with his cluster charges, so now he can use them on reinforced surfaces. So including soft surfaces like walls, floors, and hatches, you can also now use the cluster charge on reinforced surfaces. So that's a huge buff and that's going to change a lot of how Fuse is going to be played because he's not as limited as he once was before. Now before we dive any deeper into this guide, I want to talk about how the cluster charge works itself. So it shoots five pucks individually, one will go all the way to the right, one will go a little bit more to the left from the right, one will go directly center of where you place the charge, and then the same on the other side of the left side. The cluster charge also goes in order from right to left of how you placed it. So as you can see, I placed the cluster charge facing this way, and when I detonate it, the first puck will come over to the right, and then it will carry over to the left, so on and so on, shooting out all five pucks. So just to demonstrate this one more time, the fuse charge will start on the right, and then it will slowly carry over to the left, as you can see. Okay, so now I want to talk about using Fuse's cluster charges in post-plant situations. So especially with his rework and buff coming with allowing him to place his cluster charges on reinforced surfaces, this is going to be a huge benefit for these post-plant spots. So Fuse comes with four cluster charges every single round, so you can really do a good job at saving one or maybe two for that post-plant. And the reason you're going to want to do this is because it allows you to gain more time and stall more for the defenders so that way they're more crunched for getting those last few kills and then going for the defuse. So this can be a huge help for you and your team, especially if the man count is to the defender's side in that post plant. That can do a very, very good job at stalling and delaying the defenders. Another great thing Fuse is good at is utility clear. A lot of people get this mixed up. They primarily go for kills, which we will talk about later, but... I want to talk about utility clearing with this operator. Either going above the bomb site or on a neighboring wall to it, you can really get a lot of utility, burn ADSs, destroy them, burn Wamai magnets, all that good stuff, get shields, maestro cams, bulletproof cams, pretty much any utility you can think of that can be destroyed, Fuse can definitely take care of that very easily. So not only does Fuse burn those ADSs and Wamais and also destroy them, but he also gets that utility after he burns the ADSs. This is especially good since you don't have to coordinate flashes and then throw a grenade right after in the window of opportunity of an ADS being down or a my being burned. So your primary focus while playing this operator is going to be that utility clear for you and your team. Another great instance where Fuse can be good with utility, and I already mentioned this a moment ago, but burning ADSs or will my magnets. If you ever have the opportunity to, this can do a great job and also allow your team to reserve more flashes or any other burn utility for later on in the round for setting up for a plant or something like that. Okay, so now I want to talk about some common mistakes that I see a lot when people play Fuse. The first common mistake that I see is people focusing far too much on kills. A lot of people think that the cluster charge just goes boom boom so you can get easy kills with it. It's not that easy. If you do want to focus on kills, we will talk about that later on in the video, but for right now, Really try your hardest to do what I've already said, which is focus on utility, and then maybe deal damage to a defender in that process, or potentially kill them. Another common mistake I see is using the cluster charges randomly. The reason you don't want to do this is because it's very important that you always maximize your utility, whether you're on attack or defense. And since Fuse brings so much utility and he's very dense with it, you can do a lot with it if you use it properly. So using the cluster charges randomly isn't a very viable solution to this operator since you're not really going to get that much out of the cluster charges. Now another common mistake is a very, very common one, which is not looking at your surroundings. So there's kind of a meme, you know, Fuse is the hostage killer. That's pretty well known by now. Another thing is dealing damage to either you or yourself 
or even your team's utility. So make sure that you're looking around at your surroundings and you make the precise decision to place that cluster charge there and you know exactly how it's going to react once it goes below or through that wall that you place the charge on. Very important that you think before you place it and detonate it. Now, another tip I wanna give with this operator is using fuse for vertical play if the situation ever needs to happen. So let's say your buck or sledge dies earlier on in the round and that's the primary soft breacher. Well, you can use these cluster charges if the situation presents itself where you can place them on a wall or barricade, detonate it, and then you have access to vertical play below you into the bomb site. So a great example for this is clubhouse kitchen window for a church arsenal defense. Place the cluster charges on the kitchen window. You then do the vertical play on the kitchen floor, opening a lot of holes and lines of sight for you. Now adding on to this, something else that you can do is using the pucks, sort of like a grenade, but it's a lot less predictable for the defenders. So if you place one cluster charge on a window or door and you do this vertical play, open holes in the floor, you then place another cluster charge in the exact same position, the fuse clusters will then follow that same path and go down those holes that you once made with the first charge. So you can do a great job at kind of catching the defenders off guard potentially and maybe getting a kill or dealing damage. Next, I want to talk about setting yourself up for getting kills with a cluster charge. So as a lot of you know, Fuse's cluster charges are very, very scary. So whenever you hear that sound as a defender, you're going to go the opposite direction as fast as you can. Well, if you're smart and strategical with this, you and your team can set up a lot of free kills during rounds. So let's say there's a hatch directly into the bomb site. Let's just use Clubhouse Kitchen again. You open that hatch, you then start using the cluster charges on back armory to force those defenders across the hatch and then you have that teammate holding that cross, pretty much giving you guys free kills. This mini strat with this operator and teammates can be applied to pretty much every single map and every single bomb site. Just be a little creative and also with the rework coming, allowing you to place it on reinforced surfaces, you can do this a lot more and it is a lot more viable. Now a very common tip that I want you guys to take away from this video is trying to visualize the map on that side of the wall that your cluster charges are going to go into or through the floor. Really trying to turn on that x-ray vision so that way you get the most out of the cluster charge. They don't get snagged on boxes or any other objects under you or on the room next to you. So if you struggle with map knowledge, make sure you go around, maybe test fuse on some maps that you struggle with, or just learn vertical play, whatever works for you. That is a very, very important tip with this operator. The last thing I wanna talk about fuse's role. Since he is a three armor, one speed operator, he's very slow. So I think entry fragging is pretty much out of the picture. Even though he does have the AK-12 and it's still a very solid primary, I think that you should be playing more of a supportive role since you have so much utility to offer and you can also use these cluster charges for later in the round, again in these post plants. So really trying to be a lot more supportive and also staying alive longer can maximize this operator. That's everything I have for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed or learned something from this video, make sure you guys leave a like and also subscribe to the Disrupt Gaming YouTube channel. As I mentioned previously in the video, you guys can get access to exclusive sub badges, exclusive emotes, as well as two high quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month by becoming a member here on the DG YouTube channel for as little as 99 cents a month. You can also get the official Disrupt Gaming weapon skin for the R4C on Ash by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom and clicking the esports button. That's everything. If you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next video.